Okay, so I wanted to cover uh, one of the fundamental topics that you guys couldn't cover in Datacom 1, which is uh, switching within uh, communication networks. Uh, I think it's part of the fun fundamental or foundations to data communication, but as usual, since uh, some of you could not cover Some of you could not cover, uh, or you guys could not cover some of these topics. I feel like I have that uh, responsibility to go back and cover them because it's like it's the building blocks of uh, this particular course. If you don't get that, chances are you're going to be struggling along the way. Uh, even after you get through this particular semester and you still haven't gotten the foundation, I, I guarantee if you go for uh, interviews for a job or whatever and um and you had to be asked some of these basic questions that you were supposed to have co in college if you can't answer them uh chances are they're gonna uh they're gonna think you're not serious you don't really know what's the uh the, maybe the position you apply if it's related to telecom or it especially within the uh, telecom industry, uh, like the Vodafones, the MTNs, and what have you. Yeah, if they, if you go there and they ask you basic questions on switching and you don't have a clue, man, they're going to think you're not, you don't know jack about the position you're applying for because their business practically re revolves around some of these basic concepts. So if the employee cannot, or the candidate cannot even explain some of this basic uh, uh, building blocks of what our business is all about, uh, then they don't really deserve to be working for us. So they obviously going to deny uh, 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 your application or if it's an interview, you're going to just, they're just going to let you go. You know? So I, I, I think I have that responsibility to, to, to make sure this is a cover you know, so that at least when you go for interviews and you were to be asked some of these questions, uh, you can be able to answer them much uh, confidently, you know, uh, to indicate that you really, you know, understand what's uh, IT and communication or communication network is really all about. Okay. So we're covering switching, okay, within uh, communication networks. So let's get started. Okay, so on the switching, we got um, two main umbrella. We have uh, one umbrella and the communication switch, uh, communication networks. We got some um, switch networks and then broadcast networks. So practically anything that relates to any kind of communication forms under uh, kind of it, it kind of basically gets put to, into an umbrella, you know, under some kind of umbrella. In this case, it happens to be two main major <coughs> uh, networks called <coughs> switch networks and then uh, broadcast networks. Uh, for this particular course, we're going to focus a lot of attention on the switch networks because it relates a lot more to various nodes and more or less to our computing systems and other uh, communication device systems. So our attention will be more focused on, on in this particular area. The other area, which happens to be the broadcast network, falls within the televisions and radio stations or more or less shared common channels. Networks that require shared common channels, like for instance, um, um, a station like a radio station like Joy FM 99.7 happens to be its frequency channel. And uh, it has a simplest uh, broadcast mechanism where you, a user or multiple users can tune in to that particular station and be able to hear whatever it's been discussed or said on the on the channel, on that particular radio channel. 
And if you notice, for the most part, that particular channel is only reserved for only Joy FM. There is no other station in Accra that has got the 99.7 channel. So it's just kind of like uh, uh, that's that 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 allocation that is completely reserved for just that particular radio station. If you need another radio station to maybe broadcast your particular information across the airwave, then you'd have to go and uh, talk to NCA, and then they can find they can go through their uh, spectrum allocated to them according to the regions in the world. And then they'll be able to figure out which ones are available to allocate uh, for you and your business or your broadcast needs. And the same applies to television channels as well, television stations as well. They also have a common uh, channel, a shared common channel that they use for most of the transmission. And once it's been allocated to a given user, that particular station just owns that channel for as long as they keep um. Uh, paying their license dues or their renewal charges are always coming through. Yeah, that particular channel belongs to them. And then you get to share it uh, among a lot of users. You know, you and me can tune in anytime and watch TVs or video content or listen to the radios. Okay. So we want to focus a lot more on this side over here because most of our IT or technologically uh, and client systems revolves around switch networks. Now, when I say switch network or the word switch, it doesn't relate to uh, the device switch, a network device called switch. No, it doesn't relate to that. Switch here relates to how information is um, uh, kind of like a put together, combined and then separated or split uh, while it's going through various network nodes or various uh, network links, you know, like for instance, um, you guys, uh, wherever you find yourself right now, listen to this particular Zoom, you probably connected to an ISP cell network. If it's using your cell phone, if you're using a cell uh, uh, transmission for your internet service, chances are you're probably connected to um, a cell radio that's within your locality. And you have to understand that you're not the only person using a particular cellular radio over there. It, there. There are probably a lot of people around you, you know, your neighbors. If you're on campus, it's probably a lot of your colleagues are also on a particular cell network or cell radio. So there are multiple of you, there are a lot of you, hundreds or, or so users uh, that are all basically, basically sharing the same link, the same radio link for their communication needs. And the question is, how is it possible that um, we can all do different stuff on that particular uh, shared medium and not have any conflict and not have any information being uh, 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 mis- uh, uh, mis de mis uh, delivered to a different person, you know? So, and that's what really Switch is all about, making sure that information, even though users are sharing a dedicated or some kind of link, they can be able to do their own stuff without having interferences with other people's stuff. So that's what Switch is really all about generally. Now, on the Switch networks, we have two divisions. Um, we have the, the circuit switching, and then there's packet switching. Uh, circuit switching revolves around most of the analog transmission. So anything that relates to uh, analog communications or uh, information that are uh, that requires a burst of you know uh, 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 variable signal or variable uh, uh, radio transmission. That's where you'd find circuit switching a lot. So let's try to go into that and see those these two um, types of switching that we have. Let's try to get into it and see how will they manage information flow from you know various users uh, across a, a given medium. So usually within circuit switching, you'd have what you call a dedicated communication path. So meaning that um, the circuits that's required to get circuit switching going. Uh, requires you to actually have a more or less a physical medium 
that is attached to a given handset that is used for that particular communication. It has to be connected between two end users or multiple end users that are participating in a given uh, communication uh, transmission. Data sharing of voice transmission for the most part, there has to be that, um, that link, that physical link. So we say a dedicated communication path, which happens to be a sequence of links within a circuit, have to be established first. And that is needed before any kind of transmission, any kind of information can actually be sent through uh, uh, that, that particular path or that particular uh, medium of transmission. Now, the maximum capacity of a given link that's being used for that particular transmission or communication need, which is 10 bandwidth or referencing as the maximum rate of data transfer across a given link, it's usually measured in frequency. So meaning that if you were to be using, say, a fiber optic connection or a twisted pair cable, there has to be an allocated capacity for that particular medium. So if the circuit has been established for that dedicated path, is um, set up, there has to be a capacity assigned to it. And that capacity is what you term as the bandwidth, which relates to the maximum rate of data that can be transferred across that link. And it's usually measured in frequency or hertz, okay? So those sequences within that circuit must be dedicated and they are fixed for an entire duration of a given connection. So meaning that um, once a circuit is established between two devices for a given communication, it is pretty much fixed for that particular uh, transmission between those two end devices. It is up until the connection gets terminated that uh, another user can be allowed to use that particular link. So for instance, if you have a, a landline at home, a physical, you know, those uh, a landline phones for your transmission, and you were to want to make a call to somebody, we have to establish a circuit, a dedicated path between you and a person you're trying to reach. And here's a diagram that shows that. So first of all, that the three phases that are involved in the communication process, the first one being establishment of the circuits, which is what we've been talking about so far. And then secondly, there's the transmission of the data or the information that needs to be transmitted. So that tells you that before a second uh, switching can be actually considered um, uh, an established connectivity, you'd have to have that circuit uh, enabled or created for, the, for any information to go through. Before you make a call or even access any kind of data resources online, you'd have to establish that dedicated circuit. And then once it is established, then you can actually forward information or transmit whatever information you got. Okay. And then once, so with that duration, so once the circuit is established, uh, nobody else can take or basically uh, access that particular circuit between you and the in your uh, destination node or whoever you're trying to communicate with. Nobody can use that particular medium. It's kind of like established for just you. It's until that communication uh, medium has been exhausted or it's actually um, used up in terms of the communication or the data flow that you can actually release that circuit back to somebody else. So usually after the transmission of data, after it's been, after the data has been transmitted between the two users or the two nodes, then there's a termination. So the circuits get terminated now to make room for what other uh, users to actually access that particular circuit. So here's a diagram of a traditional telephone uh, trying to make a call to another telephone over here. So you, let's say you having a telephone here, for those of you using um, uh, landlines at home, if you have broadband at home, you would have uh, your phone being connected to either a modem or some kind of uh, device. Uh, and that device actually connects to the uh, ISP's um, uh, termination box outside or distribution box outside, or it could be uh, uh, an exchange box in your locality. And it can, it could be running off a pole, overhead pole or underground uh, uh, installation, and it comes to your house. 
So that is the actual second that physical medium is what has been established between you and the ISP's network. So that ISP's network relates to this particular unit over here where you have a number of uh, 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 various uh, logic gates helping you create what you call the circuit. So in this case, the once the call comes through, this transmission box over here will try to figure out who has that particular number you're trying to reach, the phone number you're trying to reach. It will try to find out from all the other circuits boards or other um, termination boxes within a given area to figure out who actually has the number or who is connected to a particular number that I'm trying to reach or that you're trying to reach. And so it goes through a loop of interconnected, you know, circuits across different regions, localities, or even uh, across the globe, just so it can reach a particular person. Assuming that the person you're trying to reach is out, it's in the U.S., then chances are there's going to be a lot more of the circuits or those termination devices that needs to uh, find out, try to reach out to the number that's connected to a given uh, uh, network. So it can be able to relay the information back to create that circuit. Okay. So in this scenario, you got all of these going on. So the circuit established between these, these particular termination bugs that your device is connected to. So this right here, and this one contacts this guy over here to create another circuit because it thinks it has the information that relates to a given user or the particular user you're trying to reach. So you forward it to the actual device that connects to the destination node and the destination node says, okay, the circuit's not busy. I can establish a circuit for you to uh, connect to this particular user over here. And once that circuit is established, then you can be able to actually start having your voice communication. Why does my screen keep moving? Nobody's tampering with my screen, is it? Uh, collaborates, nope. Requires recording, sure. Chats, yes. Okay. Okay, so coming back to this, you so you once the circuit is established, then the two devices can actually have their voice communication. Okay, so as you see, these are usually these mediums are usually physical connections. It could be copper based or fiber optic based. Okay, uh, today we have fiber optic, so fiber optic will be the approach to handle the actual physical medium of transmission across two devices that are trying to ask information on a circuit switching network, okay? I'm hoping you guys got this concept right. It's all about establishing kind of like a physical line, you know? Uh, Isaac has his hands up. Let me see if I can get Isaac here. How come the names are not showing up? Do some recording the screen. Uh, what's going on here? Let me see. Oh, okay, it's over here. Gotcha. All right. So Isaac, you have something to ask? Yeah, sir. Good morning. Morning. Um. Last week, you made it known to us that um, this semester we will be terminating fiber optics. Yes, sir. Um, uh, yes, um, I, I am asking if there's any preparation we need to do before the time. Uh, when we get there, I'll let you guys know. We're not there yet. So uh, when, when we do get there, I'll let you know what you guys need to prepare for. Uh, obviously, I can't ask you guys to go and buy the equipment. But if you have the money you want to buy it, say that's up to you. Uh, I do sell some of them, by the way. So what I would do before with that, that particular 
uh, lab demo comes up, I'll tell you the various gadgets that are going to be used for that particular uh, uh, termination session. And then if you if you look at if you look through the list of items or equipment's going to be needed for that particular uh, fiber optic termination, and you feel like you can buy one of those gadgets or devices or equipment or tools, uh, I leave it up to you. Like I said, it's not a requirement. You're not required to buy any uh, uh, gadgets or tools for the fiber optic termination. But if you feel like, hey, I want to be, you know, that's, that's the field I want to go into. That's where I feel like I want to uh, maybe focus my future career on or part of the part of my future career on. And I want to invest. I have the money. I want to invest in those tools because uh, it's going to help me, you know, get some contracts or uh, make me some money. Yes, for sure, man. Go for it. Come and let's talk business, you know. I'll tell you the All prices right. that I got, and then you can, if you're ready for it, so you bring the money, and I you invest in a product. All right, so I'll come and see you. All right, man. Sounds great. So let's do business. Okay? Okay. All right. Great. So now let's come back to uh, what we're talking about. So hopefully you guys understood what I mean by uh, within a second solution, you have to have a physical medium to make the transmission possible. Okay, moving on. And this is kind of like the time diagram of a second um, switching uh, implementation where you'd have a uh, second being established between two host devices uh, and a time lapse so the delays that are involved, and then the actual once the circuit is established, you actually have the, the data trans the information transmission or the data transmission itself, and then right after that it gets terminated. So your transmission gets terminated for a different user to be able to have access to that particular uh, uh, circuit for their transmission as well. Okay, so this just like a time diagram of that particular. Uh, of that of the circuit switching implementation. Now, within circuit switching, network resources like bandwidth are usually divided into pieces. As I mentioned earlier on, we um, since there are there can be a lot of us using the same medium to uh, access various information on a given uh, transmission. Uh, engineers have come up with ways to basically make sure that at least we all get piece of that particular bandwidth or that particular link. I was referencing to the, if you're at home and you're probably on a, a cellular network, you're sharing that particular cellular network medium or network resource with a whole other bunch of other people within your community. If you're in campus, chances are you're actually sharing with other colleagues of yours on campus because you're within a given cell over there. So you're all sharing that particular uh, network resource bandwidth over there, okay? So network resource like bandwidth needs to be divided into pieces and usually allocated to calls that needs to be established. Meaning that every single time your phone is powered up and you fell within or you happen to be within a given cell radius or a cell network from an ISP, that cell will basically have um, the equipment to allocate you a, a bandwidth, a piece of its bandwidth that it has. It has a large bandwidth, and it will be able to divide them into pieces and be able to allocate some of it to you. And the whole essence of that allocation is so you can be able to also what, handle your calls or your transmission needs without any headache or what you call, you're connected, have connection, I have a network. You guys say, I have a network, yes. So you can only get a network based on uh, the divided piece of what? Bandwidth resources that's allocated by the cell uh, system that you find yourself in. So it will help you make uh, uh, your call needs or other transmission needs within on your cell phones or you know, various uh, uh, gadgets that you use for communication. Now allocated pieces of resource are not shared by the way in terms of uh, allocation. So if you allocate a given bandwidth, it's for you. It's for you to use for whatever your needs are. And once you leave that particular uh, uh, cell radius or that particular transmission medium, uh, that resource gets taken away. Okay. So it's only meant for you once, once you within that particular radius 
or cell radius. Okay, so hence we mean it's not shared. Once allocated to you, it's allocated to you for you to use for your transmission needs. Okay, even if it's idle, uh, it still can be given to somebody else. But there are different approaches. Uh, since we've kind of concluded that, um, or engineers have realized that not everybody, not every single being with a, with a communication device is always online 24 seven or always talking 24 seven. They found a way to basically divide the banner resources of a given link into different parts or into two main parts. And the first one is the frequency division, which is usually not time bound. So there's no time reference to uh, the frequency division. And usually um, when you'd have, when you have a frequency division uh, for band resource allocation for giving a link, uh, you would probably have that um, allocated resource to you for any point in time. You would have it allocated to you basically for your transmission need anytime you want. So they are, so basically when we say that you have a, div a frequency division transmission or switch uh, second switching, uh, the frequency that's allocated to you are not reallocated to at any point in time. Uh, a given a typical example would probably be the radio station or the TV station. So usually, like I, as I was mentioned earlier on, with the reference to uh, Joy FM, Joy FM station is ninety nine. Its channel or uh, frequency channel that's been allocated to it, it's ninety nine point seven. It's only for Joy FM. Nobody else. Okay, nobody else in that crowd would have that particular frequency channel at any time. And for as long as Joy FM keeps, you know, renewing their license every year or whichever the agreement is, uh, they will maintain that particular allocated frequency channel to them. All the time, they would have that to their words, to their, uh, for their business needs or for their communication needs. Now, on the other hand, though, the other aspect, the other division, which is the time division, these is actually usually based on time. So the frequency allocated can be reallocated after a given time is lapsed. So for instance, uh, uh, your, uh, for, it, depends on kind of, it depends on the kind of time, uh, application we're looking at. If the application, like for instance, most of our GSM transmissions are purely based on time division um, uh, switching technology, uh, meaning that um, we are, the, 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 the ISPs will allocate you a given frequency for a given period of time with the mindset that you're not going to be using that frequency forever or 24 7. There's a high probability that at some point in time, your phone will be will be dormant, will be idle, not accessing any resources, especially when you're in class. Yes, for that hour, hour and a half or two hours that you're going to be in class, uh, why would the ISP keep that particular bandwidth with you indefinitely for that particular time when other people need it for their use? So what happens is systems are basically kind of like um, uh, sensing for idle phones or idle devices that are not using the allocated bandwidth that's been given to them or frequency band has been allocated to them. Once they realize that it's been idle for a certain amount of time, they will just basically elapse the time that has been allocated to that particular frequency. They will lapse it. And once they elapse it, they give it to somebody else. Okay, that might need it. That, that, that person could probably need it for their call urgently. So they will be given to a particular person and then whenever you are ready to basically use your phone or your uh, transmission again or make any kind of transmission, then you get reallocated with a different frequency for your transmission needs. Okay, so get, try to get this picture in your head that for the most part between you and me, you know that you don't use your phone 24-7. Uh, sometimes some of you are out of credit. So what happens? There's no transmission. There's no network anymore unless you go and buy a new bundle again. So at a point in time, if you were to be given an allocated uh, frequency channel and you don't have bundle, why do you want the ISP to still, you know, tie you down with that particular frequency or tie that frequency uh, to you when you don't have money to buy data? There's no point. 
uh, the uh, frequency spectrum that we have in our universe, it's quite limited. Even though it's quite large, uh, it spans quite a huge um, frequency radius. But the its applications wise, I don't know if you guys covered spectrum in uh, Datacom once. I'm pretty sure you guys did not. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys uh, did not do that. So, hey, I'm already recording the, the video for you guys. So don't try to request for it. Or, yeah, don't try to request. For it. I'll just up upload it onto the YouTube channel for you guys whenever you need it. Um, somebody wants to say something. Sir, please pardon me. What my network is really bad here, and I can't see the screen clearly. Uh, so exactly what we're going through over here. You're probably going through this because you are uh, the 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 bandwidth is sharing with other users are pretty much overcrowded, or it's quite limited. I mean. It means that your link for transmission is quite uh, limited. So you're not getting the required bandwidth to handle the required bandwidth frequency to handle the transmission. These are some of the challenges that we need to address. And this is exactly what I'm busy trying to cover with this uh, switching uh, the communication networks. Okay, so we'll look at how some of these things comes up, why sometimes you have bad connectivities. It's all based on what this concept that we're talking about over here. Okay, and we're going to go into a lot more deeper interface so you understand the complexity of how to manage uh, a telecom infrastructure to allow for communication networks and make communication uh, seamless for everybody. It's not that easy. It's very cost intensive, but with the right implementation and the right financing, uh, it can be done. I don't know where you find where yourself, where you find yourself, eh, or wherever you find yourself, wherever you are right now. I have no idea where you are. Chances are maybe you're not close to a good cell tower, or uh, you probably have a number of other users, you know, using the same uh, bandwidth frequency within that particular link that you're sharing with other users. So you're gonna have some of these issues comes up. I, me, for instance, on the other hand, I'm at home right now. I'm using my fiber optic link. And I have a huge bandwidth on it, about a full uh, 50 meg on it running. And it, since I'm at home today, it's a working day. Most of them have gone. Most of the people in my estate have all gone to work. So the chances I have that huge bundle allocated to me for just my transmission needs, because there's not going to be much competition going on or contention on my link currently, because most of the guys in the estate are probably going, home, uh, going to work right now. So I have a huge uh, bandwidth to my, um, uh, allocated to basically to my assets for me to use for whatever I need to do, okay? Are we good? So anyways, let's come back to what we're talking about. Uh, so those are the two main um, divisions within the uh, bandwidth resources on a given link. So we have the frequency divisions and the time divisions. Now, bandwidth frequencies can also be split into channels, which I've been mentioning all along, because we're trying to find a way to make it a lot more, uh, be able to cover a lot more users uh, within a given uh, transmission link that we have. So either you have um, a frequency allowance or not, you can get your bandwidth frequency allocated to you and usually split into various channels to address your transmission needs. Now, sometimes some of these frequency channels uh, that are split from the allocated bandwidth um, needs to either have a guard band. A guard band is just an allowance that are created to basically make sure that uh, uh, we don't have, um, uh, what you might call it, uh, uh, signal interferences within two uh, between two people that have been allocated a frequency channel. So uh, another example I'll give here or with, with this particular scenario over here is that um, if you take Joy FM's channel, which is the 99.7, what is the next channel that comes up there? It's probably 99.10 or, or 100, right? So they've kind of put the allowance. So that allowance that's in between two uh channels, radio channels or TV channels or transmission frequency channels is what we term as the, bar, the guard bands, 
okay? It, it helps prevent crosstalk. The technical word is crosstalk or what you call interference between two different uh, uh, bandwidth frequencies 